Hello and welcome to Monday Night Mashup. I'm Spencer Buckler. And I'm Caitlin Graham. Health officials have confirmed seven mumps cases at a U.S. Immigration and Customs facility in Houston, Texas. Officials are confident that no one outside of the facility was infected with the disease and are working to provide on-site treatment for the seven individuals infected. The news follows a recent outbreak of the measles in the Northwest that has at least 44 people infected. Both the mumps and the measles are vaccine-preventable contagious diseases. This Thursday will mark one year since a shooter opened fire at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, killing 14 students and three staff members. One student says that on the anniversary, she plans to visit the grave of her classmate. Another plans to leave Parkland for the day, trying to forget about the shooting altogether. In the evening, the city of Parkland plans to hold a vigil, but for many families of the victims, they say they're going to have to take the day's emotions as they come. Another Democrat announced their candidacy for President of the United States over the weekend. Minnesota Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar made the announcement at a rally in her home state yesterday afternoon. The Congresswoman focused on unity, adding it was time to, quote, heal the heart of democracy and renew our commitment to the common good. In the Senate, Klobuchar is known for being moderate and working with Republicans. She's the ninth Democrat to announce candidacy for the 2020 election. It wouldn't be a true news headline if it wasn't reenacted on Saturday Night Live, and that's exactly, exactly the case for the Virginia state officials accused of wearing blackface. SNL's Kenan Thompson addressed a room full of white staffers to make sure there were no other blackface scandals waiting to come out. The staffers asked Thompson when it was okay to wear blackface. The answer, never. In an interview yesterday, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam said he was, quote, not going anywhere. When we come back, your state and local news. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Monday Night Mashup. A Greenville man is dead and a woman is injured after a 911 response turned into an officer-involved shooting yesterday morning. Jermaine Robinson called emergency services claiming to be poisoned. Once first responders came to his aid, Robinson announced that he had a gun and opened fire. Robinson was shot and killed by the sheriff's deputies on the scene. The woman who was injured is in the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The pastor of a Baptist church in Aiken, South Carolina, has been charged with criminal sexual assault with a high school student. The assault happened at a Dorman High School athletic event on January 22nd. The victim immediately told school officials who contacted law enforcement. The pastor is maintaining his innocence. This is the second upstate church leader to be charged with sexual abuse of a minor this week. USCPD is looking to phase out the emergency blue light boxes on campus and use an emergency smartphone app instead. The idea arose in a student government senate meeting due to persistent repair issues of the boxes as well as financial difficulties that come with the repair. Some do not agree with the replacement of the blue light boxes, arguing that not all students have smartphones and that the cost of removing the boxes could possibly be greater than repairing them. The decision is still in its exploratory stage, while the university looks to keep students safe with a cost-effective solution. Denmark is a tiny South Carolina town that has had a lot of buzz lately for the poor quality of its drinking water. Now the effort to collect water for the small town has reached the capital city. Last week, Hometown Projects SC reached the 7,000 mark for water bottles collected. Denmark gained attention last year after reports of discolored smelly water, which failed a 2018 water system inspection. The water bottle drive continues throughout the week at Segra Park, formerly Communications Park. When we come back, we'll have Weather with Ward. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Monday Night Mashup. Um, Kaylin, I don't know about you, but today when I was going outside, I wasn't sure, do I need my rain jacket, do I not, you know? I know, it was so foggy. I'm really missing the 70 degree weather right about now. Me too. Um, let's go over to Ward, see if it's uh, coming back at all. Welcome back, Gamecocks. I'm Ward Jollis, your meteorologist here at SGTV News. Really hope everybody stayed dry out there today. It was a little bit dreary. Unfortunately, we're tracking more rain for your Tuesday. It could be pretty heavy at times, so make sure to keep those rain jackets and umbrellas close. The rain will continue on and off throughout your week. Unfortunately, maybe, maybe see it again on Friday. 
but we're tracking some temperatures in the 60s and 70s, which is where we like to see them this time of year above average. It'll be rainy, but at least it'll be warm, and that should all clear up by your weekend. It should be nice and sunny for you guys. So now let's take a look at how your country was looking today. Like I said, we were pretty dreary and cold down here in the southeast, 59 in Columbia and 58 in Atlanta, but it's actually around average temperatures for this time of year. I really wish we were in Miami, though, because look at that, 79 degrees. The southwest stayed pretty cold for this time of year, 60 degrees in Phoenix and 61 in Los Angeles. A little bit colder as you went up the coast, 36 up in Seattle. They were seeing a lot of snow yesterday and it's kind of calming down now though. Uh, 26 is your high today in Minneapolis and 33 in Chicago. Those temperatures up from what they were last week, so that's pretty nice. Now let's take a look at how your state's gonna be, or was looking today. 59 was your high in Columbia today. So, like I said, a little bit colder than what we'd like to see, but pretty average for this time of year. Some low 60s as you move closer to the coast, 64 down in Hilton Head and 64 in Charleston, 61 in Myrtle Beach. And in the upstate, a little bit colder than usual, 54 in Greenwood and 55 in Greenville. Now let's look at how your week will be looking. Like I said, that rain is going to be pretty heavy tomorrow coming in during the evening and then continuing throughout Wednesday morning, but it should clear up by your Wednesday. 76 is your high for tomorrow, so nice temperatures, but lots of rain. 62 is your high for Wednesday as those temperatures start to drop again and the clouds come back in for your Thursday and Friday. 65 is the high for Thursday as the rain comes back in. Unfortunately, on your Friday, we get closer to 70, 69 degrees for your Friday. Uh, the temperatures drop for your weekend, but look at that sunshine coming back in for your nice and lovely weekend. 58 is your high for Saturday and 61 for your Sunday. That's all I have for you guys for this week. After the break, Evan Newton will bring you your sports. Hey Gamecocks, I'm Evan Newton and welcome back to Monday Night Mashup. Tonight, I'll be going over the important win for men's basketball and the launch weekend of a possible new competitor to the NFL. The 14-8 Arkansas Razorbacks face off against the 11-10 Gamecocks here at Colonial Life Arena. The away team started off hot throughout the first half, putting USC at a four-point deficit at halftime, which grew further into a 13-point gap with only 15 minutes left in the second half. But freshman Keyshawn Bryan and A.J. Lawson were determined to ensure the home crowd did not leave disappointed. The two sparked a run that put the Gamecocks ahead late in the second half, securing the win and putting USC at 7-3 in SEC play. And meanwhile, in national sports, the AAF debuted this weekend with eight teams playing across the country. While excitement for the league did not appear to be great, people definitely tuned in to watch the new league. The Saturday games had a higher household rating in the, than the primetime NBA game on ABC. The turnout can most likely be attributed to the way it varies from the NFL, with more transparency in decision-making by the refs, lesser enforcement on the ticky-tack rules that the NFL has, also the fact that it is ongoing while the NFL is undergoing its offseason. You probably should expect to hear more about the AAF in the coming weeks. And the weekend was definitely a fun one for sports fans. And for more coverage on these events, whether USC or national, check out SGTV's Capital City Sports. And with SGTV, I'm Evan Newton, and now back to you guys. Thanks, Evan. That's all we have for you tonight. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at SGTV at USC and at SGTV News 4 to keep up on all things USC. And make sure to tune in Friday morning at 9 for Friday Morning Live. For SGTV News 4, I'm Spencer Buckler. And I'm Caitlin Graham. Have a good night, Carolina. Forever to thee.